so i'm just gonna give a glimpse into my third relationship my third relationship was no different than my other relationships broken engaged pregnant split up with a baby basically engaged think i'm gonna sit down and get pregnant and single um story of my life um yeah um in this situation i found myself being driven to the abortion clinic twice by not my ex which would be the part with the father of this child but my ex ex yeah ah cray cray um was bringing me to the abortion clinic to get rid of not his child um twice i did that and twice i just couldn't do it i couldn't do it i couldn't do it only to find out that the one who's bringing me to the abortion clinic is still in other relationships okay listen y'all listen like take some stuff take some notes like take some notes take some notes take some notes because people are crafty okay crafty and when i look back at my young self i feel so sorry for her how naive and how childlike i was and never having anyone like no one to stick by me even in my craziness but nobody want to take care of a cursed child nobody want to take care of a demonic child nobody want to take care of a child who's doing all the wrong things and so I'm rejected by everyone. Everyone has something bad to say about me. But I thank God for rejections. Because everyone rejected me. God had a soft spot in his heart for me. Let's get into this video, y'all. Welcome back, welcome back to the birth ring. It's Kenny here sitting down with y'all again for another From Death to Life series. Um, we're still in series, see, we're still in episode one, right? Yeah, series one, episode one. Okay, so, anyways, I think I touch on basis when it comes to Teen Mom 2, the last video. Um, there's two things I wanna get into here. One is, first of all, how y'all doing, okay? How are you all doing? I hope that you're blessed and highly favored like I am because I'm so blessed and I'm so highly favored. What are y'all speaking over your life? Just saying, just saying. What you speak over your life, matters is all i'm saying anyways uh let's get into this video okay anyways so i touched on basis when i said um in my last video i never wanted to be like my mother my mom had over 10 kids i lost count at some point in my life um i don't know anymore no like i'm so serious like i don't know anymore um how much kids my mom really really had um and uh she had um a few baby daddies and um that was what i was afraid of like i was terrified of that i was so scared of that of um doing that um by the time i hit my third child 
I was like literally I was her I was her imprint like I was walking the same path like I was definitely walking the same path um, as my mom now going through um, a similar lifestyle like my mom opened my eyes up to who she was and I realized that it's not that my mom loved being with different men um she was just looking she's looking for that peace that would fill the void that you feel when you come from an abused broken background going through walking her footsteps um made me realize that she was broken she was abused she was dealing with a lot of things that she's not yet been able to overcome in herself as a person. <sighs> and I got that out of the way. I found myself again a single mom when Kai, when Shai was my second child, was four months. And I found myself in a pattern where I would stay in the relationship until um, the my children's safety are threatened. My children's safety is threatened. And um, shy dad did that for me he threatened the safety of my children and so i decided to leave that relationship which was a good choice for me um anyways um when i look back i ran away from america because i felt like if i stayed in that relationship um he would hit the child out of me he either kick the baby out of me or hit the baby out of me and I wasn't gonna have that so I ran here ended up in um, another bad relationship and left decided to come out of that relationship um, because I felt that the safety of my children was threatened Um, forgive me for the noise. Like, I have a full house right now. Yay. Anyways. I hope I can get through this video. I'm in my third relationship. I, I met him when Shy was 11 months. So... Um... Broke up with Shy Dad when he was four months. Got in a relationship when Shy was 11 months. And um, at first, it was like a dream come true. Knight in shining armor, like, fell. I'm no longer falling head over heels. Like, I fell a different type of fell. Okay. Um, only to lately find out that he just wanted he he wanted the same type of the same types you know the same types same per gray same broken same same types <sighs> stack around stack around like stack sticked around in this one um and i was crazy Crazy for this one. Crazy for this one. Sticked around here. Got engaged twice. Um, this is my third time being engaged, by the way. Was engaged by Shy Dad. No ring. That's a different um, video all on its own right there. Because we got to tap on that real quick. But different conversation. Um, and um, this one engaged me twice. First time broke off because he was cheating. Second time broke it off because he was cheating. Um, yeah. So anyways, stayed there, thought I was going to get married and everything like, thought this was the one, you know, this was the one, but it wasn't, 
It was not the one. It was not the one at all. It was not. It was not. It was not. Anyways, I found myself pregnant again. This time I was 23. Ready to get married, engaged, ready to settle down. It is good when it's good. It's ugly and toxic and disgusting when it's when it's bad. And any relationship like that ain't worth it. When it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's just the worst. It's not worth it because you should be able to be in a relationship. You should be able to have disagreements and be okay. Even still be okay in your disagreements. Still be safe. In your disagreements anyways i was no longer the one getting beaten on i'm not gonna sit here and lie to y'all um i believe that from a long time i've been fighting back you know so i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh i was the victim blah 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 i was involved in all these and yes i was young yes i was in these relationship a young mentality young age but i feel like they came to a certain time where I became the abuser and I would abuse in the way that I speak, in the way that I behave. I became the one who would be in a relationship and go and meet other people, like go and chill um, with other people, even though I'm in a relationship. And it came to that point because I was like, I'm giving my all to all these people and they're not respecting me. So what is the point? So, found myself pregnant. Guess who's here, y'all? Say hello. Oh, have you poo poo? Have a light shampoo, y'all. Nah, it's just popped. So, mm -hmm, tell them, tell them. What's wrong? What's wrong? I'm here. I'm now the abuser. I'm now the cheater. I'm now everything that I never liked, you know? I eventually completely broke it off with this one, which was hard, but he put me in a situation where I just felt like my children was now no longer safe around him. So for me, that's a no-no and a time to go. And so I left completely this time. Like, and in this relationship, I was very much back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Ping pongs ain't worth it. Like you either in it or you out. Like that's it. You in the relationship or you out the relationship. And I felt like it was time. It was time to call it quits. So 24, three kids, um, still lost, still broken, still in even more pieces than before. I don't know how I did what I did after all this. I don't know how I made it. Um, I don't know how. And this is me just touching basics with y'all. Like, I'm not even going deep. You know? I don't know how I did it. You know? And um, I'm not mad. Like, I'm not mad at anyone. I'm not mad at nobody. Like, I'm not mad at anyone because the way that I see it, they were broken. They all were broken. I was broken. And we all were trying to find something to make us whole, trying to find something to make us sane, to understand this world that we're living in. You know, we all was trying to find love. <sighs> We all were, we were trying to find love. We were all trying to find love. We're all trying to find love. Anyways.
I found myself depressed. To be honest, at the time, I didn't even know. I didn't know I was depressed. I went from a size eight to a size zero, zero. I don't know in how long, few months. I don't know, tried to cling to a few more people after that. Just didn't work out. I think they saw that I was cray cray and ran. Like, they were running, okay? And I don't even blame them, like, run, okay, run. Um, and I found myself in a depressed place. I lost so much weight. I remember um, one of my college friends at the time asked me what was wrong with me because I lost so much weight. I lost so much weight. And when you're depressed and you don't even know, you don't even know that something's wrong with you. You don't even know that you're not eating days upon days. You're not eating hard to get up out of bed. I thank God. Like, I don't care what nobody say. Okay. I don't care what nobody. Like, nobody. I don't care what nobody say. Like, I thank God for my family at the time. My siblings. Like, when I couldn't. Like, I could not take care of my kids. Like... I, I found it hard to go to sleep. And when I did fall asleep, I found it hard to wake up. And there were days that I didn't even know how my kids, I don't know how they, I don't know how, you know, I don't know how, but one thing uh, with my brothers, two of my brothers and my twin sister, they were very close to me. I was never really alone in my home, you know, and I never really had, you know, I was never really alone. And I think I never wanted to be alone. However, I found my myself in a place where I could be surrounded by a lot of people at that time and feel so empty, feel so lonely. And um, before I knew it, I was thinking suicidal, like in love with the thought of death, in love with the thoughts of dying, planning out my death, planning out how I'm gonna die, planning out who I'm gonna give my kids to. Hello, 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 hello. Elisha loved the camera, y'all. I can't help it. So I found myself in a depressed place, like, and I'm at a place today where I can speak about this with a smile on my face because God has just healed my life. Like, he's just healed me from all that pain, all that hurt, especially when I couldn't, I couldn't speak about it without crying, like, without breaking down, like I'm going through it all over again. And you know what? I'm not gonna lie, someone told me that one day is gonna come where I'm gonna be able to talk about my story and not cry. And I was like, this person is crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Obviously, I couldn't say that to their face, but I was thinking it. Um, yeah, I was thinking, I was like, you cray cray. Like, you mad. You mad cray cray. Anyways, he weren't, he weren't cray cray, y'all. He's not cray cray. He's not cray cray. I don't even want to say who he was, but all honor, all glory. Oh my God, to the most high God who put this man in my life. He's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. He's not my husband. A good man, a good man. But anyways, he's not cray cray. Because today I am talking about all these things. And not a creep of hate, not a creep of hurt, not a creep of brokenness. I bless God. I bless God. Okay. I I bless God. I'm planning to put a stick on this phone where the camera is like, sticker, look there. Anyways, um <sighs> I found myself in a depressed place. Wasn't eating, wasn't sleeping. When I did fall asleep, couldn't wake up. Um was so destructive i was so destructive so destructive so destructive yes elisha's here y'all um i'm so destructive 
no longer valued life. The thought of that pleased me. It was easier for me. That was easier. Everything that I was feeling, every regret, every sorrow, every everything would have gone, you know. But I didn't know. I did not know. I did not know that God still had a plan for me. He had a plan to restore. He had a plan to restore. He had a plan to revive. He had a plan, you know, to bring me back to life. Anyways, I came to a place where I couldn't find anyone to give my children to. And um, therefore, I couldn't kill myself. That hurt me so badly. And I was walking on the high street, cray cray crying with my kids, just walking on the high street crying. And I remember looking up to God, a God that I knew exist, a God that I hated, a God that I blamed for everything. I didn't take any responsibility for my behavior. I blame God for all my behaviors, all my actions, all the outcomes of my choices. I blame God for everything. I blame God for choosing my mom and my daddy that weren't there. I blame God for everything, honestly. But that day, I had no one to turn to but the one that I hated. The one... <coughs> Why are you coughing in my video? Why are you coughing in my video? <laughs> but the one that I hated, the one that I felt did all this to me. Can you imagine? From 16, I just had a hatred for God in my heart. Now I'm 24. Go. And I'm Go. now looking Cry. to him for help. Can you imagine? I had to let go everything. I had to let go everything, but I was holding on to nothing at the time that I called on to him because I had nothing. And what I had, I didn't want. And I said, is this my life? I'm crying now, y'all. It probably doesn't sound as clear as this. This is my life to have kids, to have kids with different men. I had nothing. I had nothing. I was nothing. I am nothing. From that moment, I don't know what it was, y'all. I don't know. At the time, at the time, I didn't know. I did not know. But from that moment, everything changed. Everything. Everything changed in my life. And may I be real with y'all, I felt something different that day. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I felt something different. Something happened that day. Something happened that day. Something happened that day. I cannot lie to y'all. Something happened in my life that day. But what I did not know is that God heard me and immediately, immediately as I gave my life to him. Immediately. And remember, I didn't want my life, so giving it to him was the best 
decision. I had no other decision, so they weren't no holding back. And it was my, it was my greatest, the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life. One thing I ask myself every day is why didn't I do this sooner? Like, honestly, like, honestly, why didn't I, why didn't I, why didn't I? At the age of 16, I had some friends, two brothers. Rest in peace, dog. I had a friend, I had two friends, brothers, um, that led me into prayer to surrender my life to God. And I genuinely did, and I genuinely, I genuinely felt a joy. But that same day, as I surrendered my life to God, and the demons that were in me before left. And I gave myself to God. Around that same time, I was back in my sins. What I did not know is that those demons that left me went and gathered some more friends and came back and came right back in me. And I became worse than I was before. Because even though I gave my life to God, I had no foundation and I had no guidance. I had no guidance. And so I was even taken over even more. But I was still God's. I was still his. And at 24, I surrendered my life back to him. That thing that felt different, I know now was the Holy Spirit. And God used his sweet Holy Spirit to teach me and guide me into worship, daily worship. Y'all, I didn't know what in this video. But anyways, when I surrender my life to God, okay, something changed. I was hearing or I was being led to do certain things. I was being led to clear out some stuff out of my house. I was being led to like clean in front of my doorway um, with um, salt water. I was being led to take out my piercings um, and believe me it was quite difficult because some stuff I was very attached to. Um, I was being led like no longer wanting to be around certain people, no lo longer wanted to listen to certain music. Um, I spent most of my time listening to sermons from T.D. Jakes. That's like that's all I listen to um spent most of my time like I'll be woken up around three in the morning to pray and at the time I didn't really believe that I knew how to pray but I was just being led into prayer and led to read my bible and this went on for months and um what I didn't realize is that God was teaching me. He was um, deactivating the things that I learned of this world. And he, were, he was activating the spiritual and the true truth. He was activating the spiritual things and the truth. So he was opening my eyes. And he was changing me. Um, little by little and um, I got to a place where things that I used to do I couldn't do it anymore without feeling strange you know I had no urge for sex like y'all 
You're talking about a girl who lost her virginity young, young, yeah. I had no urge, no urge for sex at all. Like no urge for um, intercourse, no urge for any of the things for smoking, no urge to go out partying, like all the things that I used to really um, dive into. I had nothing, like I felt for nothing. I wanted to, to do any of that. Um, in this time, God led me into university now. I didn't even know how I got through college, y'all. I don't know how. And I think this was a divine setup by God. Like it was a divine setup. Yeah. By November, so I gave my life to God in April 2014. By November, God ha um, was leading me into prayer for my husband. And at this time, I'm terrified of relationships. Like, I'm not thinking about no men. I'm not thinking about no relationship. It ain't me. I don't want it. And I'm keep being prompted to do it. And I'm crying. Like, I'm in tears. I'm like, no. No. Eventually, I gave in to this sensation, this voice, this leading, this guidance. And I pray for my husband. Specifically, I was being led to pray for my husband. During this time... Men would approach me and I would hear this audible voice say no. And I was obedient to the voice, the voice I've never heard in my whole entire life. I'm hearing now if I heard it before, I, I didn't know. I I think it was three to four times that, uh, and one of them particularly, I think he was devil sent. Uh, but thank God for the Holy Spirit. And I kept hearing a clear no. And I, I was obedient to that voice. And uh, eventually one day, and this is like, this is not even a week or two after I made that prayer. Eventually one day, I'm in the lecture hall. We're having some girl chat in there. And a guy butt in. And I remember this guy because I remember for some reason scoping him out and being like, nah, this, this you too loud. Like, I would never... He's too loud. This guy butts in to our conversation, have a seat comfortably next to me, and um, invited me to church. And so we, we switched numbers on that basis that I'm going to go to church with him. I did not end up going to church with him. I did not. <laughs> I think I blew him off a good three times. And he asked me to the movies now. I'm a movie girl, y'all. If you want to get me at my house, invite me to the movies. And he did. Um, I think it was, um, what did we watch again? The Hobbit. Oh, love The Hobbit. Um, so, <sighs> invite me to the movies. Ah, <sighs> um, not even a year in, we were married. Yeah, I'm talking about my husband, y'all. I'm going to end this video here. I hope that you all are enjoying these stories, these glimpses into my life. Um, And as you all know, I always have something to say. One, if the relationship ain't... This one's tricky. If you are broken and in a relationship and you've been in this relationship for time and you are not healing, you need to get out of that relationship because you need to heal. You need to heal. You need time for you. You need time to figure you out. You need to heal. During your healing process, you need God. Nobody can heal you. No man cannot heal you completely but God. Okay, I'm just talking to the children of God. Yeah, not everyone's going to take my advice, which is cool. It, my my messages ain't for everyone, okay? If you're in a good relationship, I mean, when I say good, I mean this man is kind, he's respectful, 
he's dealing with you right he ain't adding he ain't breaking you up more while you already broken and you feel like you can heal there in a marriage whatever you need to form a secure relationship with god in prayer in your word spending time with the almighty god so that he can heal you completely and show you who you are in him secondly if you're looking to marry you're in a relationship that you ain't leading nowhere and you want to be married and you first need to pray to god and find out if this person you're with is your husband or your wife and ask for a clear sign ask for a clarity i had a friend uh, and uh, the guy she was it was acting up and we went into prayer in agreement and we said god is this person's not for her let him come in pack his stuff and leave to god he came in he packed his stuff and left Anyways, I'm going to end that story there because that one is a different one. So let your prayer be very clear. If you're with someone, you're uncertain. If that's your husband, if that's your wife, if that's your wife, give a clear, clear prayer. Father, if this person is not for me, let him, let him or her do something. Like give, say, let them do something precisely just uh, so that I know that you have already told me this person ain't for me. God ain't gonna come and take that person out of your life. You have to decide to leave. You have to decide that, okay, God has shown me. If he showed you once and you think, okay, it's a coincidence, pray again. I'm sure he's gonna show you twice. And um, may God your center. May God your center because when God is your center, when God is your everything, and this take time, this take time, it take consistency. But once you get a hang of it, nothing moves you, nothing fades you. Even when you find yourself in a, in a bad place in life, you still have hope. Yeah. So I'm going to end this video here. I hope that y'all enjoying it. I don't know how long I've been talking too far because with this video, I kept video and stopping, video and stopping, video and stopping. But I hope that you all are being blessed by this. Like I'm going in deep with y'all, like deep. And um, my I'm looking forward to do a topic with you all about becoming a wife but not knowing how to be a wife. And to me, that was deep. Becoming, but not knowing how to be. Okay. God bless you all. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, y'all. Subscribe. Um, tell your friend to tell a friend, okay? And I keep saying this in my videos now. If you are not a part of our Grace Walk, um page our youtube channel become a part because what god is about to do is about to blow your